Welcome to the TRTN Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And as a guest today, we have back here, Dr. Jordan Grant. Welcome, Jordan. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So the question for today is, can one start on testosterone replacement therapy with a high PSA prostate-specific antigen test? That's a good question. PRT and Hormone Optimization Channel. I was on the channel before, so I've been following the channel, watching it every now and then, so be sure to check them out. Consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Um, this is a pretty popular topic um, everywhere, but we see it popping up in the forum quite a bit. So the, the PSA, something that I want to kind of back up about PSA is people get a little freaked out about it. Uh, the PSA itself is just a marker, right? It's a protein. Um, and I see a lot of people that are always posting like, what can I do to bring my PSA down? It's like, okay, the PSA is not the problem, right? PSA is a marker for possibly something going on in the prostate. So either it's elevated for cancer or it's elevated for benign reasons. That's it. That's your fork in the road. So what you need to do is if you're a man of screening age for prostate cancer is you're going to get screened for that usually prior to starting TRT. Um, a lot of doctors will screen men in their thirties when they're starting TRT. I think that's, it's liability thing that they're doing it, but it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, you shouldn't treat that man any differently just because he's starting TRT if he's not at, at risk factors for prostate cancer. So, you know, current AUA guidelines recommend screening between the ages of I think it's 55 and 70. Um, but you can start earlier if there's a positive family history or if the patient's concerned. There's no, you can start anytime you want, really. Um, and I mean, I have a lot of guys in their 40s that will start screening them in their late 40s or early 40s just to make sure you're not missing something. But if you have a high PSA when you're getting ready to start TRT, obviously double check the PSA, make sure you've uh, checked it under the right conditions that you haven't had sex, you know, right beforehand, you haven't been, you know, horseback riding, anything that's rattling, putting pressure back and forth on the perineum. Um, no signs of you, you don't have signs of a urinary tract infection or prostatitis, but all those things being out of the way, if you have a high PSA for your age, you need to have that worked up. You know, TRT is not going to cause prostate cancer. It's not going to feed it, but that doesn't, that's beside the point. These are two separate issues. You need to have that prostate checked have a rectal exam, make sure your, your prostate feels normal. Um, I have a lot of guys that'll come to me for elevated PSA. It's just a one-off, right? It's just one time high that last year was normal. Do a rectal exam, feels benign. I will repeat it six weeks later, eight weeks later. And a lot of times they'll go back down to where they were the prior year. Now, if their PSA goes up instead of down or it stays abnormal, I offer those guys a workup, whether that's an MRI or just a prostate biopsy. Um, you know, I'm a bigger, as a urologist, we do a lot of prostate biopsies and there's a lot of controversy out there about biopsies and the problems that can arise. And I see a lot of myths about it online. People saying, just get an MRI, that's all you need. That's not true. Um, MRIs are not 100% accurate at all. They're not even close, actually. I'll have a guy that'll have a, you know, let's say we did a biopsy two years ago when it was negative, but as PSA keeps climbing and we'll get an MRI that's normal, but then the PSA is still kind of just not doing what we want. And I biopsy them and they've got cancer, right? And, and high grade cancer. So the MRI missed it. Vice versa, I did one this last week, a guy on active surveillance for prostate cancer. We got an MRI and showed a PIRADS-5 lesion at the base of his prostate. So I'm thinking, okay, that's going to be more cancer there. I did, his bi I did his biopsy, targeted that area, did the others. He only had, still has one small core, the apex, not even, that whole area was not cancer. So either way, you know, you get false positives and false, net, false negatives with the MRI. So if you're, a, if you're a man and you're concerned about the PSA, if it's rising too quickly, or if you have a, an abnormal digital rectal exam, in my opinion, you need to see a urologist and probably need a biopsy because that's going to alleviate your fears as well. If you get a biopsy, it's well done and it's all negative. And then you also get a sizing of your prostate, right? When they do the biopsy, you get an extra size. You've got a freaking 60 or 80 gram prostate. Well, that explains why your PSA is a little higher. A man with all things being equal, usually a man with a larger prostate is going to have a higher PSA naturally. And those are the guys where I'll hear them. They'll say, I had a negative biopsy but my PSA is six, what can I do to bring it down? Don't, why would you do that? The PSA is not hurting you. That's just your PSA. 
So um, anyway, that's the that's my spiel on that is you just need to have a proper screening. Um, but if you have a high PSA just for benign issues, yeah, you can start TRT. There's men that start TRT who have prostate cancer, right? Like who are on active surveillance. They have a low volume, low grade. So Gleason 6 prostate cancer in one or two cores. We're just watching them, but they have low T and they have symptoms. Those guys can be treated now. There's plenty of, that's finally catching on, thank God, in the United States at least. I don't know how other countries are dealing with it. Um, that you can treat men on active surveillance with TRT. Um, and I've got several guys on that. It doesn't cause their PSAs to keep going up. It's not feeding the cancer. Like it's just been such a bad myth for so long. Um, so I'm glad that's changing at least here. And hopefully that'll kind of spread as well to other countries. But PSA is just one of those things a lot of guys get freaked out about. Um, it gives them a lot of anxiety. Somebody was posting on the group today about that, about how every time he gets one checked, he's just so anxious about it. And you don't, you don't need to be anxious about it. I mean, it's not a great test, but it's a, it's a good, it's just a tool, right? It's just a tool. If it's going up too quickly, cons consistently, um, that's a problem and can indicate something going on, but you need to have a rectal exam. That's the thing. A lot of guys hate that. I get it. I don't, I don't like doing them. And I sure as heck wouldn't like getting one, but it's important. Um, cause if you have a hard spot, a nodule or, or something out of the, out of the ordinary that needs to be worked up. I've had guys with normal PSA levels, right? PSA in the twos, uh, do a rectal exam, feel a hard spot, biopsy cancer, right? So you got to have, you, you really need to have both, but, um, that's about all I got on that. And once men get on TRT, does the PSA go up a little bit in everyone? It, it, usually it depends on how low they were when they started. So, and that kind of goes along with that whole saturation model, right? If they were in the hundreds, uh, then yeah, once you get them to that saturation point, that'll probably bump the PSA. I think on average, it's like a 10th of a point. I can't remember what the, I don't know if there's any latest ones looking at it. That was five years ago when we looked at that, it might bump the PSA one or two tenths and that's it on average. But um, you're not going to see it causing it to rapidly rise because T TRT is not feeding anything, right? Like once you hit that saturation point, everything else shouldn't really be affecting the prostate. Um, so yeah, you could expect, especially if you're a guy starting out really low, you could definitely expect your PSA probably to go up a little bit. If you're starting in the, you know, in the sixties or seventies nanogram per deciliter, I mean like bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Your PSA may go because your PSA may have been artificially low due to having such a low hormone status. And so you're just trying to get it back up to actually normal. Right. But it doesn't work. And this is the whole myth with prostate cancer back in the day, right? They thought it was it was an equal and opposite thing on both sides, just because they could castrate somebody and bring their PSA down and kind of stop the cancer for a little bit. They thought, well, that must mean more testosterone is going to do the exact opposite. And that's not how it works. You know, that's why I tell people I could I could starve your cells of glucose and eventually, you know, I mean, depending on the cell type, but starve your cells of some essential nutrient and cause them to die. Well, that doesn't mean that giving more of that nutrient is going to cause them to just grow forever, right? It's not, it's not equal and opposite. Uh, it's kind of like a gas pedal in a car. You can only press it. So you keep pressing it down. The car is not going to just keep going infinitely faster. There's a lot of other factors that, that restrict that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's clear and reassuring. Thanks, yeah. uh, Jordan. Absolutely. Consider becoming a channel member for exclusive features like loyalty badges, early access to new videos, funny stuff like rough cuts and bloopers, members only photos and status updates on the community tab and members only live stream chat. On desktop use the join button next to the subscribe, on mobile use the join link in the description. Alright guys, well do this next, click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thanks.